I'm Matt Willis, Public Health Officer with a COVID-19 update for November 29th. I'm going to describe our local response to the emerging concerns of the Omicron variant. There's a lot of information circulating, and it's important not to overreact at this stage. I want to share what we know and what we don't know. First, what we know about this variant is based on information being assembled internationally over the past few days. It will take at least two weeks to really understand the properties of this variant and to predict the impact it might have. We have no ev evidence, as of now, of the presence of this variant in the Bay Area, but this will likely change soon. The variant has been detected in over 12 countries so far. When it comes to virus variants, there are three main properties we look to to determine the impact it might have. The first is infectivity. That is, how contagious is it? The next is severity or virulence, meaning how sick does it make people? This determines how likely it is to drive hospitalizations and deaths. And lastly, we need to know how well protected are people who are vaccinated or who have been infected in the past in terms of immunity. Infectivity, severity, and immune response. These questions are answered by looking at the microscopic level at the mutations themselves in the laboratory, and then also by observing how the variant behaves in real life, in individuals and across communities that are impacted. In the several calls over the past few days with regional, state, and national agencies, one piece of data regarding Omicron at the population stood out that I'd like to share. This slide from the excellent epidemiologists in South Africa show the main variants as a proportion of samples tested over time in that country. We see the early days on the left, as it was all beta. And then as time passes, moving right, it was all delta in the red, and now, the sliver on the right is Omicron taking over in just the past two weeks. That's the blue. It is now 75% of all samples in South Africa. This pattern, along with the laboratory evidence of mutations on the spike protein that we know confer high levels of infectivity, suggests strongly that this variant is simply more infectious. Note, vaccination rates in the Southern African region are about 25% and ours and Marin are more than three times higher, which will be protective. Vaccine remains our single most effective tool. The CDC's decision to suspend travel from Southern African countries starting today is an effort to slow the spread and buy time to better understand this variant. We're working with our clinicians in Marin to make sure samples are tested for variants to detect Omicron if and when it surfaces here. We can expect some important questions will be answered in the coming days. We don't yet know the level of severity. There's some preliminary data that it may cause less severe illness, but we need more data. We also don't know the level of protection of the vaccines offer against this new variant. So it boils down to this. With all we don't have control over, we have very direct control over our own risk and it's the same fundamentals we've been practicing over the past year. Vaccinations and boosters, covering our faces when we're in indoor public settings, staying home when we're sick, and testing when we have symptoms. We know the vaccines have provided good protection against every other variant, and that the booster expands the number of antibodies in our body. You can find a listing of COVID-19 vaccine sites at getvaccinatedmarin.org. Thank you for doing your part.